So finally, after a year of consideration and trying to put things together, being on the water, thank goodness again, and just trying stuff out, I have finally put my jig box together. Finally. We're going to find out what this looks like. You ready to run a gun? It's time for blast off. Let's go. Todd here with you. Welcome back to Bassin 101 Jig Tutorial Part 1. The good news is I have finally put together a jig box. I have simplified it um, and basically just put it in a little small container of the jigs I use, I've chosen to use, the colors I use, how to mix match them, everything else. So this is going to be probably a couple of different parts because we're going to go over tackle, rods, reels, line, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to cover some bases that I've never seen anybody mention. And I think it's very important when you go to start choosing your jigs, your trailers, materials, as far as silicone or rubber, hair, whatever you want to use. Me personally, here's something very important as far as choosing the size of jig. Now, here's something you never hear people talk about. And I think it's the most important part when choosing jigs. You know, lead, tungsten, that's, that's, that's not an issue, okay? The most important thing that I think people leave out of choosing jigs is the fact that everybody has their own weight. Some guys like quarter ounce. Some guys like three eighths, some guys like half or even three quarter. And other guys can switch them back and forth, back and forth. Now you probably think, well, yeah, because of water depth or wind or this, that, and the other. Uh uh. That's not why. Everybody has a specific weight of jig that they're comfortable with because they know what the fall rate is. If you have, um, say, a, 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 a habit of fishing a jig a particular way, you're going to have a weight that's comfortable. Make sense? Me, I like a 3 8 with a Zoom big salty chunk. This is about as old school as you can get. And no, I do not thread it on like a pork chunk. I prefer to slide it up the skirt and keep it very compact just like that. But because of that type of trailer, because that has something to do with it too, because of that type of trailer, I know how fast this falls. And the way this, the, the speed this jig falls, I'm very comfortable with. So these are the jigs I've been tying in those videos several months ago. This is a 3 8 tungsten. And I just tie my own uh, very soft rubber type skirts and I keep them in my in my box I showed you this before with a clear heat shrink tubing sleeve that allows me to pack a jig up in that box and it just keeps everything neat and clean you don't have to worry about your skirt getting all over the place and you can do that with silicone too but I have chosen rubber, and like I said, a 3 8 with a zoom salty chunk, big salty chunk. Now you might like other trailers, and that's great, okay? Other trailers, nothing wrong with that. Curl tails, double tails, um, you know, missile bait D-bombs, doesn't matter. Be sweet beavers, whatever you like to throw, that's what you need to throw. 
but I guarantee you that on your jig with that particular favorite trailer of yours you have a certain weight jig you're very comfortable with and that's something people don't mention on these jig videos and that really burns me up because they're missing the whole entire point all they're trying to tell you is hey this is what we do okay well great but what about you you're not them okay and there's a lot of good jig tutorials on YouTube so don't get me wrong I'm not complaining about that what I'm complaining is they're missing what's in here and what's in here okay I like a 3 8 jig with that trailer because I know the fall rate. Now, if the wind starts picking up, a lot of times I'll just keep my rod tip down and kind of you know work it and keep control of my slack very fast. And the way you do that is as you're working it up, as soon as you drop that rod tip, spin that reel handle and drop your rod tip to the water and you're taking the slack out of it and your line's not gonna blow. Same thing on the initial cast. As soon as you make that cast and that lure hits the water, thumb it and snap that line straight throw your rod tip to the water instantly you won't have that bow that you get if you're in say 10 15 mile an hour winds once it get, gets past that i'm not gonna be throwing a jig anyway that's when we throw crank baits and spinner baits and you know what whatever uh senkos things like that that you can keep heavy and keep in contact with so again weight of a jig. That's the most important thing you need to consider because everybody gets into a rut when they fish a jig. Same as any kind of soft plastic, any kind, actually any kind of fishing lure really. So I like a 3 8 I know some guys that like a half ounce. Okay. I know some guys that throw a three quarter all the time. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. If that's what you throw and you're catching fish on it, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, okay? Colors. Um, well, before we get into colors, let me show you what I'm carrying everything in. I'm using one of these Plano style boxes. And on one side of it, I keep all my jigs. And I keep spare rattles and collars in one side. But you notice all of these have this heat shrink tubing on them. And that is that one's got rattles in it. I like a very soft rattle. But that's this side. And basically you have your your chartreuse type baits, black and blues, a little bit of chartreuse, and more of your natural colors. That's just how I kind of keep that deal. And this side, you're probably wondering what in the world's under that lid? Here's a little tackle tip for you. I keep a piece of paper towel because it keeps these jig trailers from touching that plastic so when you open it up all your plastic goes everywhere. By keeping that paper towel on there, I don't have that issue. That's tap -up. That's a tackle tip for you. And I won't charge you money for that. That's a freebie. How about that? <laughs> but seriously, uh, it really does help in, in, in storing your soft plastics like I said, it's you know I keep six different color trailers in there, five jigs, six trailers as far as colors, and these were all the same, and this holds exactly one package, perfectly. Now for colors, I want to keep this short because I'll explain this more in the other video. Okay, I have tied your standard black and blue. I've also tied a standard black and chartreuse. That's a color people don't even think about anymore. One of my favorites in the summertime is olive and some lime green. Great summertime color. Another color that I've done a tutorial on tying is one of my favorite all-time colors too, is Texas Crawl. Now the black and chartreuse has a lot more chartreuse in it okay so don't get these two confi confused this is a little bit cleaner water than the black and chartreuse but that can be used in clear water too and then another favorite of mine y'all see me tie something like this too i just changed it a little bit but that's olive pumpkin and a little bit of orange 
good springtime color, um, good early fall color, because it just has a little bit of that orange in there. It shows a little bit of a molting type deal. Those are my five colors. And as far as trailers, I have green pumpkin, chartreuse shad, which is really good with that olive and lime green because it gives you just a little bit of chartreuse in there. Blue, black, here's one that's unfortunately discontinued. This is Castix Choice. Now you're probably thinking, well that looks like green pumpkin. Not really. See the difference? I like this because it's got a very brownish pumpkin translucent type color with a little bit of that green pumpkin in there. It's actually more green than green pumpkin, so it has a different shading than that, as you can see. Completely different shading from that green pumpkin, and these look completely different in the water. So that's why I do that. And I also boil these too, so you really get that pliable in there, and it really does that pork chunk thing really well. Those are my colors. Um, and I don't know if I showed this one. Randy Blaukett is not the only person who uses this. Chartreuse. I don't know if y'all saw his deal a couple of months back where he was talking about black and chartreuse and chartreuse. Yeah, Randy, you're, the, you're not the only guy who's done that. That was back in the 80s, especially when chartreuse first come out and Uncle Josh. Oh, yeah, man. You know, used them on black and chartreuse and you know we even used them on brown and black jigs so some of us already knew that little trick it's just you know these are really really hard to find i'm just i'm thankful i was able to get some because i was out but um those are my color choices and so that's going to be part one right there guys um i'll get into more detail about these in part two as far as Mix and matching these trailer colors with different jigs. Uh, there's still rods and reels to talk about, tackle, line, all that kind of stuff. But I just kind of want to go over that today, how I store these things. It's in a very small box. I can grab this, and this is all my jigs right here because I'm using only 3 8 because I'm very comfortable with this weight of a jig. I know exactly how long it takes to fall, which also gives you an idea of water depth. So there you go on that. That's all I have today, guys. So until next time, may the Father bless you in keeping Yeshua's name. And as always, fish on.